Should you give employment information over the phone? My name is Nina and I'm about to get in your business. If you would like to know more about how to better run your business, human resources, and other business operations topics, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are uploaded. Your company may receive a phone call requesting employment information about a current or former employee. It could be a company asking about someone's job performance or someone wanting to know employee salary or other information. What can you say? What should you say? How much information should you provide over the phone? The short answer, I don't care if it's a current or former employee, do not give information over the phone. How do you know who the caller really is? The caller could be a private investigator, a stalker, or an identity thief. Here are my best practices for this type of scenario. No matter what the caller says, even if he or she claims to be the President of the United States, never, never, never give anyone calling out of the blue any information, no matter how simple the question. Does Jane Doe work here? Don't answer. Business owners, always transfer the caller to the designated person or department in your office. Whomever is designated to handle employment verification and information requests should be knowledgeable about any consequences resulting from an unauthorized release of employment information. Don't forget to train other employees on the importance of not releasing any employment information over the phone. If the designated person is not available, take a message, period. The person designated to handle these types of requests should ask for the first and last name of the individual, the name of the company or entity requesting the information, and the specific information requested. State to the caller that your company only provides this type of information in writing and ask the company to submit their request via email. Notify the employee of the entity requesting the information, preferably via email. Forward a copy of the email to the employee that includes the questions asked. I recommend that the employee sends back approval in writing that it's okay for your company to respond to the email and release that information. Respond to the entity requesting the information in writing only. Do not call back. Only provide the information requested. Do not volunteer any additional information, no matter how helpful you may think it will be. Also, don't use inflammatory language when providing information about a former employee. That leads me to the next part of this video. When discussing an employee in any manner, regardless of employment status, Avoid making embellishing or inflammatory comments about that person. Here are some examples. We fired Donna for stealing. Tom was sexually harassing another employee. Jim was fired for using drugs and we don't tolerate druggies here. Why can't you just say that Jane failed a drug test on December 12th? Doesn't that sound more professional? Inflammatory language like my earlier examples may cause someone to seek out the advice of an attorney. What if someone calls asking for information on a former employee? What should your company do then? Again, I do not recommend providing any information verbally. Take a message documenting the caller's information and inform the caller that their company will need to obtain a signed written release authorizing your company to release whatever information is being requested. 
With that being said, I would still contact that former employee via email for your own written verification to release the information, just to cover all the bases. In addition, I still recommend only providing the information requested without volunteering information or adding any inflammatory language. Maintain all information requests, written authorizations, email correspondence, and other documentation in the employee's personnel file. A simple question not properly handled could be a disaster for your company or for an employee. Establishing best practices will help you and your employees easily maneuver around these situations as they arise. Thanks for watching.